Awesome. But yeah, so uh, just starting it off real easy, um, I was just hoping you could uh, just give us a brief introduction. Um, just maybe state who you are and where we are right now. Gee, how do I do that introduction? That's not easy. Um, well, first of all, my English name is Roy Henry Vickers. My, that's my colonized name. I was born with the name Weehass, which is a Nishka language, and it means big fireweed. And I carry the chieftainship Tlaquagila, which comes from an area uh, called Rivers Inlet, in an old village called Kidit, which people actually call, um, oh, you're going to be able to cut some of this out. Oh, for sure. Uh, Wikino or Oikino, which is at the head of Rivers Inlet. So that's me in a nutshell. How's that? That's great. Good. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, so um, what is an old growth forest? Hmm. What is an old growth forest? An old growth forest is a forest that's been there as a natural growth since. term time immemorial or forever. So to me, uh, trees that have been growing there and have been untouched by man, that's an old growth forest. Yeah. Good answer. Um, what is the significance of an old growth forest to you and your community? Well, old growth forest to me, uh, and I am part of my community, so I wouldn't apply to the community. Old growth forest is where our ancestors are. It's part of our, it's in our DNA, actually. Um, the way we think of it is uh, the earth is our ancestors. But we are our ancestors. Science has finally caught up to ancient knowledge, which says that we are our grandparents and their grandparents and their grandparents. And science today proves that in our DNA is part of every ancestor that's walked this earth before us. And so if they are part of the earth, they are part of the old growth forest. They feed the trees and the trees feed us with fresh air. So an old growth forest to me is life. My life, your life, everyone's life. Thank you. Mm. Um, this is exciting because I never yeah. get to put things like this. Every time I talk to someone, something different comes up. Oh my God, I've never said that before. That was so beautiful. I've been That's asked many times. But, such yeah. a good answer. I um, feel blessed to have recorded that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, moving on here, mm -hmm. um, how does the wood you use or choose to use play a role in your carving and artwork? Oh, that's a good one. The wood I use is chosen um, spiritually. So our, our beliefs, as I said, we are connected to the ancestors and the ancestors of the earth. And the earth is where Ambun, the beautiful big cedars, come from. And they are the most prized of all of the wood that grows in the forest for the people of the northwest coast. Can you just go back to the question? Again? Yeah, no problem. Um, so, how does the how does the wood you use mm, play good. a role yeah. in your artwork and carving? So, when I go to choose um, wood uh, for ceremonial purposes, like a totem or a mask, uh, it's done with great prayer, uh, fasting, walking in the woods. Uh, being connected to the ancient and 
some of my my knowledgeable eye that has been taught to me by those who've gone before me, my mentors. So I will walk into the forest and I'll just describe uh, this incident with the great raven totem that's standing in Okino today. When I went to look at the cedars, I went with my brother who is the chief Ted Wakas from the village of Okino and the head of the house of Wakas, which is also where Tlaquagila I come from. And we went into this one tree that I wanted to see. And as we came to the tree and looked up, we looked at each other and both of us put our hands in the tree and both of us cried immediately. And for me, that was a touching of what we can't see, we can feel. So that tree was like a person who said, I'm the one. It's really hard to explain. It's something, I don't know if you can feel that, but it's something you feel uh, guided by some of your intellect, but mostly it's about connecting to the spirit that is you and all of the ancestors that have gone before. It's just yeah. so beautifully said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it makes total sense. Like, mm -hmm. it just really resonates. <laughs> Everything you're saying, it, it just really resonates. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, could you tell us a bit more about carving, such as the history of the art form and its significance for you? Well, I don't know the history of the art form because it's pre-history, pre-written history. So prior to colonization, all knowledge was passed down from generation to generation like this, speaking to one another, telling stories to one another, singing songs, ancient songs to one another. And so what I've learned about the art and sculpture of wood has come in many different ways. It's come in my dreams, it's come in visions, it's come with mentors who are, who are verbally talking to me. It's come from my grandfather who would take me out on the land and ask me what I, what do you see out there, grandson? And I say, well, I see the forest and, and the water and the sky. And he'd look at me, he'd look away like that and he'd say, well, could you really tell me, can you look again? which is respect, to look again. Could you look again and tell me what you see? So I'd look really hard, look at the sky and the clouds are moving, oh, they're moving westerly. I said, oh, that's, there's a westerly wind blowing and the tide's up and there's some beautiful wood on the beach that we should look at for taking home. And he said, good, good, now you're learning. Now you're learning to see. So it's a, it's a connection to the land that's about feeling. Again, it comes back to feeling, but it also comes back to ancestral teachings that are handed down from one mentor to another to another. And so here I am, the age of my grandfather, and I'm talking to people and telling them, no, this is our connection to the environment and to nature is our connection to the future of all of our children and their children and the world. Beautiful. Mm. Um, could you just give me one sentence, just so, because I think I just missed the, uh, just the intro to that. Uh -huh. Just, if you just say, um, like, something like carving is... Yeah. Just so I can connect all of that, because I don't want to use my own voice. Yeah. Okay. Does that make any sense? Oh yeah, totally, totally. Um, carving for me is 
being guided by an ancient history and my knowledge of what I'm called to do as a carver. Perfect. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Um, all righty. So moving on here. Um, what connection is there between your art and the natural world? Oh. The connection between my art and the natural world is a, a close connection. It's, it's connected by spirit. It's connected by knowledge. It's connected by sight. It's connected by all of the stories that I've ever heard and the vision that I have in my mind to do whatever it is that I'm moved to do. So that, that brings me again to this, it's like an ethereal or a, an intangible. Uh, my connection to art is inspired by nature. And that nature could be you, or it could be the tree, or the sky, or the wind, or the season. It, it can come from anywhere. And as a student of the English language and someone who's always inquisitive, inquisitive, uh, I wanted to know what inspiration was. So I went to a teacher and I said, the word inspiration, can you explain that to me? And my teacher said, yes, it comes from the Latin inspiritus, which literally means the breath of the creator coming into you. That's my art. It's all inspired, and I know I never know where it's coming from or what, what angle, but I know that it's coming from nature. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Uh, it, it is estimated that less than three percent of productive old growth forests remain in BC. What is your take on the current state of old growth in BC? What are my thoughts? Yeah. What is my connection? Or just what do you think about how little remains and how much has been destroyed? Well, there's just a shadow remaining. Um, the shadow is small. So what remains is small compared to what well, was there even when I was born 74 years ago. Uh, I live on the banks of the Skeena River and, and when I was a child, hundreds of logging trucks rolled down the road that's Kispiox Valley Road that this address is on. Hundreds a week. So, go out into nature, this is what I feel. And as a leader and an artist and a spokesperson for not just indigenous people, but the world that I live in, uh, I feel it's imperative for us to do whatever we can to protect what's left. Have some sort of policy that provides for old growth cedar uh, to artists like myself. We're still creating incredible totems from the history of the people. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Yeah. Um, so the next question I got here is, um, what do we risk losing with the destruction of our ancient forests? 
we, we will lose life as we know it. We may lose life completely. Chief Seattle put it, and I'll ad lib it, uh, but Chief, Chief Seattle said that uh, a man is not uh, a force over nature. We are part of the web that is nature. And what we do to the web, we do to ourselves. So the river that flows by my home, I, I want to protect it. Why? Because it's water. And we are water, mostly water. When we die and the ashes are part of the earth, it's not much more than a handful. The rest is water. And the water feeds the trees. So we're all connected. So if we destroy the environment, we will destroy ourselves. Yeah. It's all connected. Mm. Yeah. Um, how are old growth forests connected to other ecosystems such as rivers? Mm. Kind of just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The river, the river is the lifeblood of our mother, the earth. The forest provides the air we breathe, the oxygen that we need to, serve, to live. The river is the road of the salmon. We are the salmon people. If we protect the river and we protect wild salmon, then we provide for generations to come. If we don't protect the river, then we lose the water. And the water feeds the trees. And the water gives us life. So again, it's all part of this connection to nature, which we are. I am, I, when I pick up soil and hold it in my hand, it's not separate from me. I am the soil. My ancestors are the soil. I am my ancestors. My name, Tlaquagela, has been handed down for so long people don't know how many generations, whether it's a thousand years or two thousand years old, no one knows. So the names that people carry and the songs that we sing are about our connection to the river to the ocean, to the sky. And the river runs past my house and it goes to the ocean, and the ocean goes to the sky, and the sky comes back to the river. It's all connected, and we are all part of it. We sweat, and our, our sweat goes into the earth and joins the waters. Every, every human Every human hand that touches water changes that water in a way that no other human can change it. And that's something that's scientifically proven today. Our ancestors have known that. <laughs> Spiritually. So it's like our spirits can lead us. And if we step out of this, the system that we're living in, if we can somehow smash um, the dollar. My village that I come from is over 5,000 years old, and it's still there. And it's been lived in continuously for that long. <laughs> so prior to a dollar in my pocket and, and this house that I'm, that I'm in today and the car that I drive, my ancestors lived here with no money, successfully. And they were the ones that helped this whole system that's come here today. It is actually leading to the destruction, or it seems to be leading to the destruction, unless warriors like you and I step forward and say, okay, enough is enough. We have to change the way we think and the way we live. Respect, take another look. We'll find another way, there is a way.
That's a great answer. Do you want to take a break for a minute, or we're no, about halfway fine. through? Okay. I'm, I'm Trying to cut audio for one sec. We'll just do yeah. it. We'll do a quick safety cut. I yeah. uh, just.